Hi, welcome back to the course on IPM. In today's lectures, let us understand about the important pest occurring on the coal crops, especially the cabbage and the nature of damage, symptoms expressed by them and as well as ultimately the IPM practice followed in order to manage these pests. See the cabbage is one of the important vegetable crops which is grown across the country and as well as the cauliflower which belongs to the same family. The pests which are occurring on these vegetables can be broadly categorized into the insect pests of national significance and the insect pests of regional significance. So, in the insect pests of national significance if you look the diamond back moth takes the first place where it is quite severe and cause a huge economic loss. And occasionally you also get the head borer, the leaf webber and there are two species of uh, the aphids and a butterfly pest which is normally referred as the cabbage butterfly which normally found more serious in northern part of India and also the tobacco caterpillar. Under the pests of regional significance, so occasionally you get the gram caterpillar that is helicorpa, some leaf eating caterpillars like semi lupus are then, then mustard aphid is the one which normally occurs, painted bug, the mustard saw fly and the cabbage the semi looper. Now, let us understand the nature of damage of these pests. First is the diamond back moth and this diamond back moth is uh, cosmopolitan in nature it is widely distributed and if you look at the global map and the distribution pattern of this pest then you will understand the nature of distribution. And it attacks not only on cabbage, but also the cauliflower and other cruciferous and as well as the solanaceous plant, but more seriously you get them on cabbage and cauliflower. The moth which actually a tiny moth and it has got a very characteristic diamond shaped marking on its back whenever it is at rest, hence it is normally referred as diamond back moth, usually lays the eggs on the leaf surface and the first instar larvae immediately after hatching will mine into the leaf the epidermal layer and then feed on the internal tissues. As a result you start getting these white batches or the blotches on the leaves and after the completion of the first instar the larva comes out and then start scraping the chlorophyll content on the plant or on the leaf as a result you start getting the white papery patches or the appearance on the leaves. Then the later instar larvae will start making in small irregular holes on the leaves which actually coalesces and then becomes a complete defoliation kind of a thing. In severe cases it also attacks the head region and which results to the a huge reduction. And the leaf webber, so this is also widely distributed quite regular pest, but it is of a minor importance or the status as it occasionally reaches the pest proportion. And the moth is quite stout and lay the eggs in batches of a small batches about 15 to 20 and the larvae initially they gregariously feed by scraping the leaves, but later they actually web the leaves and then start feeding internally and so the severe infestation will normally leads to a defoliation and also they attack the head region leading to a rotting of the head. Then the cabbage head borer which is Hellula andalis is also has got a very worldwide distribution, but it is sporadic in nature and occasionally some becomes the serious pest. So the moth it also lays a few eggs at a time and the larvae generally webs the leaves and bore into the stem or the stalk and this actually prevents the head initiation causing a multiple shoots or the heads and sometimes when at the head regions or head formation at the button stage they bore into the cabbage head and completely prevent the formation of the head. We get two species of aphids, so Bevicorine brassicae and Lipaphis erizimi among which Brevicorine brassicae is uh, quite serious and both adults and the nymphs are the damaging stage 
and they congregate at the base of the leaves and so the normally the body is covered with a white waxy coating and they suck the sap from the leaves. And because of a continuous sucking you normally see the discoloration on the leaves, then drooping of the leaves and ultimately the withering of the leaves. If the population is too high then as they secrete the honeydews, so normally the fungus will grow on it and normally get the sooty mold appearance which affects the photosynthetic activity of the plant. The cabbage butterfly that is Pyris brassicae is quite serious on the northern India usually distributed along the Himalayan region and as well as parts of the north India. And this is the butterfly pest which is whitish in color with a black spots on its forewing and lays the eggs in a groups which are yellowish. The larvae are medium to large with a black and white patches and mainly defoliate. And because of this heavy defoliation, so you get the skeletonization of the plant is normally seen and this leads to a poor development of the head and sometimes they are also known to attack the head region. Tobacco caterpillar of course is again a sporadic pest widely distributed in India and occasionally so it causes a serious damage to the cabbage and the moth lay the eggs in groups covered with the scales or the hairs and the caterpillar initially will scrape the leaves and forms into a papery white appearance and later they start defoliating and which affects the normal growth of the plant. Cabbage looper, the two species of loopers or the semi loopers you get Trichoplusia ni and as well as Plusia species and they also cause a similar type of damage such as the causing an irregular holes on the leaves and in severe cases as a defoliation which results into the stunted growth, non formation of the head region and complete loss of the yield. The caterpillar can be identified based on a very characteristic semi looping characters. So, which normally found on the plants feeding the leaves. Mustard safly occasionally we see this pest on the cabbage and this safly which belongs to the hymenopteran group. So, we will have the young ones which are looks like a caterpillars and they usually feed uh, from the margin and leads to the defoliation. Then painted bug that is Bagrada cruciferarum or Bagrada hilaris is another sucking pest which is widely distributed, but quite serious in certain parts of the country and sometimes causes a major damage. Both the nymphs and the adults they usually suck from the leaves and as a result of which the wilting and drying up of the leaves is normally seen. So, for all these pests, so we need to actually look at the economic threshold levels and based on the economic threshold levels the management practices can be initiated especially the chemical management practice. For diamond back moth, so the economic threshold level ETL is 4 to 7 larvae per plant during the head formation region. For leaf web borer it is 1 larvae per meter row, whereas for cabbage head borer, butterfly and the mustard saw fly it is usually 1 larva per plant. For integrated management, so again we should first look at the resistant or the tolerant varieties. For against the aphids, we do have the resistant or tolerant varieties and wherever the regions where the aphid menace is more, then we should go for these varieties. As for pre sowing operations, summer plowing or the deep plowing is very much required as it actually kills the many the resting stage of the pest. Then removal and destruction of the plant remnants, plant remnants is also one of the important practice and especially for diamond back moth. So, we should go for sowing of 2 rows of bold seeded mustard after every 25 rows of the cabbage as a trap crop. So, the first row of the mustard should be sown at 12 days before the transplanting and whereas, the second row at 25 days after the transplanting. This is very essential as it actually uh, divert the diamond back moth population. So, from the cabbage. Otherwise, we can also go with the intercropping with the tomato, garlic, coriander, etcetera, in order to harbor more of the natural enemies. For cultural methods, so you know that for tobacco caterpillars or any other defoliators, field sanitation is very much required, 
especially for Spodoptera, if you look at it, you can growing the castor as a trap crop. So, will actually attract more of ovi position. And for cabbage butterfly, so intercropping the cabbage with nasturtium is quite effective. Then for mechanical methods, the collection and destruction of the caterpillar is quite essential. As a physical method, installation of the pheromone traps for monitoring the DBMM tobacco caterpillar, light trap at the rate of 1 per acre in order to monitor the leaf webber as well as the tobacco caterpillar and sticky traps especially yellow sticky trap or the yellow water pan for the cabbage aphid is quite effective and erecting the bird purchase also for the defoliator management especially is quite effective. Several biocontrol agents have been recommended among which the releasing the egg parasitoids of trichogramma chelonis or pretiosum at the rate of 20,000 per acre, 4 to 6 times at weekly interval is going to take care of DBM. Then the application of the commercial BT at the rate of 1 ml per litre is also very effective against uh, DBM. And in order to manage the tobacco caterpillar and DBM, we can go for foliar spray with 5 percent NSKE or commercially available azar directin. And also NPV against Podoptera at the rate of 100 LE per acre which is uh, mixed with the jaggery or with the sandovit uh, as an screen guard is quite effective. So, lot of chemicals have also been recommended against it looking into the economic threshold level. So, we can go for these the chemical pesticides in managing DBM or the cabbage borer and especially for sucking pest like cabbage aphid. So, we can go for the systemic insecticide and for the tobacco caterpillars we can go for some of these the chemicals. Thank you.